This week on Maker Update, a stargazing microcontroller, frictionless gears, voxelated displays, hand lettering, and a Hakko soldering station on the cheap. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update. I'm Tyler Weingarner and I hope you've been doing great. I've been keeping busy working on my camera slider. It's built, but now I'm trying to find the best stepper driver to produce the smoothest movement. But enough about that, we've got a brand new shelf full of great projects. So let's check out the project of the week. You probably know by now that I'm a sucker for any kind of motion controlled camera project, but this one by Greg the Maker takes the cake by a long shot. He's built a miniature version of what's known as a go-to telescope. These types of telescopes are common in the astrophotography world. They get their name from the software that drives them, which allows you to tell them to look at an object in the sky, and it just goes there. Greg calls his project the microscope because it's significantly smaller than your typical go-to scope. He's using a compact parabolic mirror lens with a Raspberry Pi Pro camera sensor, while a CNC shield handles all of the motor operations. Everything else is 3D printed, and it looks like it could probably all fit into a backpack, while regular scopes of this type look about the size of a mini fridge. We also need to talk about the overall quality of the Instructable he's written. Greg describes himself as barely an amateur, but this might be one of the most exhaustively detailed Instructables I've ever read. Not only does he provide the resources for you to build your own, but also the information so you don't make the same mistakes he did when selecting the motors, designing the drive system, selecting the optics, or any other part where it could go wrong. The project is neither cheap nor trivial to build, but the results speak for themselves. Time for some news. A few weeks ago, I came across this video from Neodyne Magnetics about magnetically driven gears. These are 3D printed gears where the teeth are made of neodymium magnets. There's some pretty obvious advantages to this. Because the teeth aren't making direct contact, issues like wear and friction should be pretty minimal. I'm not a mechanical engineer, so I have no idea what kind of mechanical losses would be involved with a system like this, but it's still cool to see. More projects. If you're like me, you could probably stand to upgrade your soldering station but maybe you're just not ready to splash out on a Hakko system. Angelo from Tech Builder claims that he's designed an equivalent soldering station for just $7. That's an impressive figure, but it doesn't cover all the costs. You'll still need your own Hakko compliant handle. He has recommendations for a similar handle and then replaces it with a genuine heating element. From there, he's provided a custom PCB, Arduino code, STLs, and the rest of the bomb for you to build your own. I think I see this one in my future. Sean Hodgins is no stranger to building radical, inspiring projects, but his cyberpunk-inspired volumetric display is just something else. The display itself is a sandwich of several transparent OLED displays, driven by a Feather M4 microcontroller. The video he produced is less of a step-by-step -step tutorial and more like a short film about what it's like to be obsessed by an idea and then the drive to express it into reality. You're not likely to build this project, but you're bound to get inspired to tackle something huge after watching it. Maybe that huge project is something like this Arduino-powered art clock that I found over on Instructables by Ira Hart. The clock is a large wall installation powered by 25 Arduino Nanos. Each one drives a pair of motors that pivot these two independent segments to represent digits or just make kinetic art. I don't know that I'd want this for myself, I feel like time winds away fast enough without me staring at a hypnotic clock, but it's cool all the same. I know it's only March, but it's never too early to start thinking about Halloween. Over on Adafruit, I found this harness for animatronic wings by the Ruiz brothers that's almost entirely 3D printed. The motion itself is provided by a pair of sturdy, metal-geared servos that can support some decently large wings as long as they're also supported by bearings. You also have the ability to control the speed via a remote potentiometer. If you're looking for some sort of winged costume, give this one a look. Time for some tips and tools. If you've been a fan of Tim Hunkin's TV series, The Secret Life of Machines, I've got some great news for you. And if you're a newcomer like me, I've got some great news for you too. Tim is beginning a whole new series on YouTube called The Secret Life of Components. It's designed as an episodic deep dive into the various components that make our projects work. The first episode is already up, and it's all about chains, the ones you use to transfer mechanical power. This looks like it has potential to be a fantastic series, so buckle up. 
If you've ever watched a video by Laura Kampf, you know that hand lettering is a huge part of how she expresses herself in her videos and projects. In a recent live stream, she talked about her design process with regards to hand lettering. A lot of it comes down to basic font techniques and skills we learned in basic handwriting back in school. I have to admit, I'm both jealous and inspired. I love the look of hand lettering, but my handwriting largely looks like a train wreck. This is good bedrock for practice. A few weeks ago, Geeky Fay Art dropped this video on how she captures clean time lapses of her 3D printing projects. She's capturing time lapses of her prints that look a lot like what you can do with the Octolapse plugin but she's doing it on a camera that's completely external from her printer. And the methodology is fantastic. She's using a radio remote trigger on her camera, and it's triggered by a little pokey stick on the extruder. After every layer, the printhead moves out of the way, and when it homes all the way to the left, it triggers the camera shutter. High tech and lo-fi at the same time. I love it. If you've spent any time with us before, you probably already know about 123 blocks and why you should have a set. But this recent video from the Stumpy Nubs Woodshop got me thinking about them in a whole new way. Whether you're using them as right angle references, measuring tools, or just as a useful anvil with holes in it, check this video out. I was really impressed with the segment about bolting the blocks together to create jigs, and what separates cheap blocks from really expensive ones. Check this video out. You're bound to find some new ways to use these awesome tools. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, we've got an older video on how to repair traces on damaged circuit boards. The tricky part here is identifying which trace has gone bad. If you're able to do that, you just solder in a bypass with a short piece of hookup wire. If the trace is lifted away from the board, you'll probably also need to trim away the loose trace so it doesn't cause a short. A few months ago, I was able to use this technique to fix a remote that had broken after being stepped on. It saved me a lot of money and headaches since I wasn't able to replace the remote alone. And that is going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and sign up for the Maker Update newsletter so you never miss a show. Big thanks to the folks at DigiKey for making this show possible and having all the parts we need. Take care. We'll see you soon.